Hey everybody, welcome back. I hope you're doing well today. Today we're gonna talk about how to make tall, skinny necks on a vase like that. I know it's not an easy task, especially when you first start making pots, but man, do they look good. Let's go. All right, guys, I'm gonna do my best to uh, explain how to do this uh, because I'll be honest with you, I would say the majority of what it takes to learn how to do this is just hours and hours and hours and hours of practice and pounds and pounds and pounds of clay. Most of you know that and understand that and that's good. But still, there's probably a couple things that I could share that might be able to help you with that, things that I've learned uh, along the way in the past 27 years of making pots that would help uh, you all understand and know how to do that. So uh, that's what today's video is about. I hope it's going to help you and I hope you learn something. Uh, but uh, I was throwing uh, some vases yesterday, some small vases, and I threw this one this afternoon and I thought, man, this clay is just working really well for me right now and these vases are looking really nice. So I thought, you know what, let's make a video and talk about how to make tall skinny necks on a, on a vase like this. And uh, I will say the first thing that comes to mind or the, one of the things that I thought of yesterday when I was making these is I was making various shapes of, of vases, some with a lot bigger bottom and some with you know smaller, you know, round, uh, still rounded, but uh, leaving more clay at the top for the neck. And I will say that one of the the biggest issues, uh, sorry, one of the biggest issues I've ever noticed in myself was a perception issue, and that was uh, what I mean by that is that my perceived idea of how much I needed to push out the clay and how big of a belly that I needed to make on a piece as I'm making it before you make the neck and the top, that was one of the, my biggest challenges because a lot of times when you're when you're making the belly on a piece, you're your perception of how big that needs to be is not appropriate because you haven't made that top yet and you haven't you don't know exactly how much clay to leave to make a good proportion pot and uh, I mean you can make a proportion of a pot of any kind of proportion of belly and neck and all that but there are certain ones that I think look better than others and so in my uh, goal or my uh, in my chasing after the perfect pot which never happens but in my in my goal of trying to accomplish the shapes that I want, there are certain proportions of a belly and a neck and a top that I want to achieve. And at times I've had a problem, or, or not a problem, but at times I've had a misconception about how much to leave in either the top or the bottom to get the shape that I want. That's what I'm trying to say. So as, I, as we do this, I want you to, to think about that, or next time you're throwing, uh, think about that. Think about maybe not putting as much uh, of a belly on a piece and then make the top and just kind of see how it goes and feel it out for your own self. And, uh, and you may not have that problem with the perception, but I'm assuming that if I did, there are lots of other people that have and do have that issue. And you may not realize it because a lot of times we don't know what we don't know, right? So uh, anyway, so I'm going to start throwing some of these, but I thought before I did that, I want to talk about that. Uh, the other thing that I would say is that as I'm making these, these are one pound vases. I, I pull the clay, but I don't pull the clay as much as I could. You know what I'm saying? Like if I was just making a straight sided tea glass, I could pull the cylinder a lot taller than I'm gonna pull here in just a minute to make one of these vases. And that's because if I'm gonna belly this out, I need a little bit more clay there in order to stretch that out and make that shape without making it too weak. Your main weak point in a vase like this is this area right in here, right below that neck, right where that comes in the smallest. And because of the weight of this on top of that belly, if you make this too weak right in that spot right there, you're gonna have a problem every single time getting that neck smaller uh, because it's gonna wanna collapse or buckle right there and you can have that issue. Uh, the other thing that you'll have an issue of, mainly I've seen an issue in myself and others, is that if you don't leave enough clay in this top part here, as you close that in and neck it in, you're, uh, you're, the top is gonna to wanna to buckle. The thicker that clay is up there, now it can be too thick, but if you leave a little bit more clay in that top portion as you're pulling, 
and then you shape the bottom and then you want to squeeze that in, you're going to have a better chance of that not buckling. Uh, as well as the other thing that will help it not buckle is to center the clay really well. Make sure it's good and running true. And then as you pull, try not to pull it out of center and shape and try not to shape it and get it out of center because if you get it out of center at any point and then you try to close that top end, that wobble is going to get worse and worse as you compact that clay down into a smaller neck. So I know there's a lot of tips there in one little section, but uh, we're going to see those fleshed out here in just a second as I start throwing more of these and uh and talking through and i might just make a couple here and then we'll come back and talk about some details after i make a couple of these vases and you can watch that All right, here we go. We're gonna walk through the steps of what I was doing in those last couple that you just saw. And I don't think I need to explain the first step of centering the clay ball other than what I said at the very beginning about making sure that it was centered very well. And uh, I mean, you should throw everything centered very well, but uh, there are certain shapes that you can get away with it not being centered quite as well. Um, and as far as opening, Nothing special there other than the size of the bottom. You don't want to make it too wide if you want to make a small base on the pot that you're making. Like I said, one of the first tips comes into place when I did that first pull there. You can see I left a good thickness. I probably have, you know, a good uh, quarter of an inch of thickness there at the top. Go ahead and clean the excess water out of the bottom. Now I'm gonna do my first pull from the base. I'm gonna be pretty aggressive with the pull at the bottom and then gradually light up, lighten up as I get towards the top so that I continue the pull all the way through, but I'm not pulling nearly as much clay out of the top half as I am the bottom because most of that clay that I wanna get evened out is in the bottom anyways. I'm gonna do the same thing one more time and I'm gonna push in and be way more aggressive at the base and then lighten up for the probably top three quarters. I'm gonna continue that pull all the way through and maybe pull a little bit, but not much for that top three quarters. And then uh, I'm gonna start the shaping by cutting away that ex excess clay. If you saw my recent video about making a foot on the bottom of a pot, that's uh, gonna do the same steps right here that I did in that video. Start by making the, the base of that about the size that I want my foot. Push in and leave, make that extra clay protrude out there to make the foot with. I'll round that foot, clean up around that. All right, now we're gonna start doing the shape. And this is where I say that the perception of how big this belly needs to be can be difficult because you sometimes my, my tendency was to make this belly way bigger than it needed to be and then I didn't have enough clay for the top or the neck. And it's only because you haven't closed in that top yet that you can't really tell sometimes how, how wide you need to make that bottom. But after you make a few and then you get the size that you want, you can work off of that memory of, okay, I don't need to push any more than that to get the size that you want. 
I guess I went ahead and, and jumped ahead a little bit and didn't explain what I was doing there. Um, but we'll get that on the next one. Pulling that up so I can cut that little bit of wobble off the top. my tool to make sure I got a good round shape right on the top part of the shoulder there. All right, once I got that, add a little bit more water right up in here and then I'm gonna pull this neck one more time or at least shape it more than pull it. All right, I'll uh, switch angles and then we'll at least walk through the uh, steps of at least one more and then uh, see where to go from there. All right, here we go with a, another vase from a different angle. This clay ball has a little bit of air in it. I can feel it already, so I'm gonna try to get that out before I continue. All right, now we're gonna recenter it. That's one thing that will definitely throw off your vase if you have a little bit of air in the clay. That's gonna make it not pull evenly, make it hard to center. And that, you know, there's a chance that I didn't get it all out and it might show up again here in just a minute. We'll find out. Feel a little spot right there on the inside. And there's a couple on the outside right there. So I don't know, we'll see. This could affect it in the long run. And if it does, you guys might get to see me flop another one. <laughs> I think you guys enjoyed that in that previous video way too much. And the top's a little uneven already just from that, uh, just from those air bubbles, but I think I can still work with it. Looks like I'm gonna cut away that extra clay, make my foot. All right, now we get to the neck. I'll explain this a little bit more. What I normally do with the neck is um, start by wetting the clay, dipping my sponge in the water, wet the clay down to where I want to neck it in. I don't want to add water to the whole thing. I definitely don't want to get water on the inside because I'm going to make this too small to even get a sponge on a stick back in there. So I'm just going to wet the clay down to there. And then I start by squeezing in, collaring my hands together and, uh, and, and pinching that in. You don't want to do too much at one time either because then you're going to buckle the top. So you can see I gradually pinched that in. I went from, you know, this big around to that big around. Then I'm going to go a little bit more. Add a little more water. Usually after this 
second one there, you can see it's got a little bit of a buckle in it. That's from earlier, like I said, with that clay having air in it. I'm gonna go ahead and see where that sharp angle is right on that shoulder. I wanna go ahead and round that off. Now, well, before I finish closing that off, that helps me keep the shape and also keep the integrity of the piece. That's a little more important when you get to larger sizes, uh, not to create sharp edges there because the more weight you have on top, the more chance that has of collapsing. But it's just a good practice in general. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off because it's already a bad enough wobble. I'm sure I'll have to cut it again based on the, the wobble that's in that neck already. But if I do it now and then do it again later, that helps me keep it more even. All right, so now I got that pretty skinny and I can come back now and pull it. This, I'm doing more pulling with my left hand than my right hand. You can see there, I was kind of following it with this hand, but I was doing more pulling between these fingers here than I was with my index finger like I normally do just because of the, the size and the shape of the neck, I could do that. But now I'm gonna do shaping with my right hand, supported on the inside with my left. I don't think I'm gonna to have to cut that again. That's good. I'm gonna to wanna to check that shoulder again, make sure I get a nice even shape up through there. Hopefully my head wasn't blocking that view of me doing that. All right, let's do one more and hopefully it doesn't have an air bubble in it. Another thing that will help you uh, tremendously with making uh, any pot really is to have really consistent clay, whether it be softer or stiffer. If you got really consistent clay, it's one thing I love about having a pug mill is that I can have fresh pugged clay. Even if it comes out of a bag, it has been pugged and de-aired, but if it's been sitting in that bag for a couple months, it probably has some hard and soft spots. So having a pug mill is a great way to even that up, or you can hand wedge it if you don't have a pug mill, but either way, having that consistent clay is a big benefit to making anything with a delicate shape. Then it's a lot easier to center, a lot easier to pull consistently without having those hard and soft spots mess, you, mess up your fluid motion. No air in this one so far, that's good. As you can see there, I'm gonna center. And each time after I finish pulling, you can see me kind of work on that top there a little bit, recenter it, kind of compress it just a little bit, just to kind of help me keep it steady. Because I know I'm gonna wanna work on that top quite a bit and keeping that steady is a big key. Said. All right, I'm gonna add water just to that top portion there. Start squeezing that in. I'm gonna do that gradually. Start at the base, come up, follow all the way through, even if there's a little bit of a wobble. Add more water just to that top portion there. Squeeze it in, follow it all the way through, even if it starts to wobble a little bit like that one did, okay? 
one of the things uh, that I've learned as far as cutting off the top of a piece, you definitely want to, I, I prefer a needle tool and you definitely want to get it wet. So that way as you're pushing the needle tool in, it doesn't drag on the clay. You're pushing some of that water into that spot. And then once you're done cutting through, just lift up. If you do that dry, that needle tool and that clay is going to drag and it's going to cause a problem. All right, I'm going to pinch in a little bit more right at the base and pull up. Now I want to work on this shoulder. You can see the shape there is not quite rounded like I would like. So before I finish shaping that neck, I want to work on this shoulder. And now I can come back. and shape the neck. Alright guys, well there you have it. We made several small vases with that tall skinny neck and I tried to share everything I could think of that would help you in the process of making those. Maybe some things to do, some things not to do. And uh, you can see not all of them that are that shape. I made some last night that are more bulbous and round and squatty. Uh, but today I was inspired to make this shape and so I thought I would share with you guys some tips on how to make those. And uh, one of the only other things I thought of that I didn't say is that uh, as these pots get larger and larger, say if you want to make it a two and three and four pounds, it gets a lot harder, uh, even for me with all the experience I have. So if you want to learn to make this shape, start with half a pound or three quarters or one pound and work on the techniques of making those and then try to move up. Uh, it does get a whole lot more difficult when it gets more clay because the top of that vase is going to weigh more and more. And then that shoulder still got to support all that weight. Uh, that's bearing down on that skinny neck. So anyway, like I said, I hope this helped you guys. I hope it inspired you. And if it did, uh, leave a like on the video, leave a comment, and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't before you leave. And I uh, hope you guys have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye. All right, just for fun. Maybe we'll do this as a bonus clip at the end after I said goodbye. We're going to see how extreme I can get. So I might fast forward through the beginning part. Just see how tall and how skinny I can make that neck. Who knows? It might be ugly, but just to see.